ciao to everyone, or as we say in Italy, ciao a tutti. My name is Joey Balistrieri. Welcome to my channel. I'm so glad that you're here. I am back with another project. I think this is my fourth, maybe even my fifth. I've lost count, but this is with the Deluxe Check Bundle from DD Beads. It's not a monthly box. It's not a subscription, but Stella, the uh, founder and curator of, uh, well, she's the founder of DD Beads and the curator of the Deluxe Check Bundle. She puts them together periodically. Um, I don't know that she even has a time schedule, but they are amazing. I would say she does curate them a little bit, but mostly it's a sampler. So I ha can link in the description box the other projects that I've done from this bundle, but I pulled from her collection the whites and kind of the snow colors with some lilac. I just thought these were so pretty. I'm not sure how I'm going to use these leaves in my bracelet because I really wanted to use these little two hole tile beads but they could it could be something as simple as a charm and then I just pulled from my stash this little gold plated micro pave toggle clasp but sometimes I use magnetic clasp what did I do on this one I used a uh, I used another toggle clasp. This was actually a bracelet that I did with the last deluxe check bundle that I got from her. These gorgeous brick two hole beads were in it. And a two hole bead is really fun to create bracelet patterns with because you get some negative space. You just have to figure out how to taper back to your clasp with your pattern and with your, um, you know, getting your length right. So, which is why when I'm stringing on this, I'm gonna uh, clamp off and work from both ends. And I'm going to be using my soft flex wire this one is the 49 strand purple amethyst color and it is just perfect with these beads and i love the soft flex wire because if i expose it a little bit like in my negative space or toward my clasp it looks great they are so many pretty colors you can cover it with seed beads to make your final loop or a wire guardian or even french wire but if you don't want to and if you have a good color match like i do you might just, you know, leave it open. So as I said, I'm gonna be stringing from both ends and I was kind of playing with my pattern here. Uh, so I'm gonna start with the very middle, um, just the very middle and then work outward from there because I know this is going to be, uh, I don't know if this is, I say I know this is going to be my middle, but honestly I don't because when I start stringing this, I will decide if I want to have more uh, sections of this pattern or not, but I'm just gonna start out with both wires together and this is going to give me an idea of what I need for spacers. So what you see here is some little gold filled three millimeter uh, spacer beads that I had in my stash, but seed beads work great for that kind of thing. And I always do a test as well to see how many strands of what my stringing material will go back through these were a little twisted so that's why it's that's why it's being a little stubborn but that's going to be the start and like I said that might end up being the center of my bracelet I'm going to work my way out from there so the pattern that I think I'm going to be doing or what I was playing with is these little gold three millimeter they're gold filled they have a really good customer rating and I was gonna see what they how they fit like that and I was just making a little pattern to work my way toward the two hole tile bead in the pattern so can you see what's happening here um, it's competing for space where it comes out of this bead. It's just competing for space. So I'm going to need to do a smaller bead here. So I'm just going to pause and go into my stash and look for maybe even a 15-0 seed bead or an 11-0 would definitely be smaller than this three millimeter bead. And like I said, I don't mind the soft flex wire being exposed but that's just not sitting right beside each other and it's not going to make a pretty stringing pattern so just be a second okay 
I tried seed beads, I tried everything, and what I determined the problem was, I don't know if you can see, but the hole on this check glass flower bead is pretty small, and it's making my two wires really tight when they come out of the bead. So let me back this down so you can see. I tried every configuration from an 11-0 seed bead to a 15-0, and what really worked was to put another one of my spacer beads because it has a larger hole. And then there was space for two little beads. It separates the wire, so it's, there's space for two of these little three millimeter spacer beads. And then I could, you know, move into the two strands for beading. And it just lays really, really pretty that way. And I love the gold. I love the little gathered section there. It almost looks like a shank. So that's what I mean about working with two whole beads is really just working out your spacing and the nice thing about the soft flex is if you are matching your color like I have like I said um, you can uh, allow this to be exposed and allow it to just be part of your design and I do that an awful lot it's just not what I was going for this time so I'm going to continue to kind of fill up my strands and work out my length um, I'll probably pause the camera I normally do because for me I love doing this and I love taking my time and you know pulling things on and off until I'm happy with it but this is already turning out to be a really sweet little bracelet um, I have these here too which um, I got these from the DD beads website these are plated hematite very small I think these are three they might be four but I think they're three millimeter little um, spacer beads and then these are the fluted three millimeter beads from the deluxe check bundle find the hole these are so amazing they have the picasso wash and the fluting so much detail for such a tiny bead so i'm kind of playing with that pattern and i'm going to string it pretty much like that decide if i want another one of these in the bracelet one of these sections or how that's going to work out with my length and i will be back and show you what i came up with so i've been playing with these beads for about 30 minutes i i love to do that taking them on and off until I get my pattern the way that I want and it was looking a little bit too matchy matchy to me to repeat the same thing on this side and I do love these flower beads but I really wanted to get more of these little fluted uh, purple check beads in and um, so I decided to change up my pattern a little bit and kind of reverse things so like here I have the purple beads flanked with those uh, pearlescent white long beads and then I did the opposite here where I flanked the pearl beads the pearlescent beads with the fluted beads and for me that's really pleasing I like the asymmetry of it um, you know some people love it some people don't but that's what I'm going to do and um, I didn't remember if I showed you at the outset but I'm using these gold filled spacer beads I'll link these below this is like a three millimeter and I think this is a six um, but you could probably use 6-0 seed beads and like maybe 11-0 seed beads or 8-0 seed beads to accomplish the same thing but I really love this gold and while I was sitting here I also designed a pair of earrings so I did one sample and I decided to do it with the soft flex wire and just let it show because as I was saying when you match your color of your soft flex wire to your beads it can show and look how gorgeous it becomes part of the design and so we'll do that one together and then I was looking at these leaves um, I really did want to use the leaves they look so great with the flowers but this is a little bit larger scale and so what I think I'm going to do is do a head pin and make a little dangle on this flower and I put a jump ring through just through the hole and I'm going to add that as a charm and just have a little flower and leaf dangling from my bracelet and it will coordinate with the earrings so I put a few of the soft flex number two crimp tubes these have a nice thick wall and they are gold filled and they are just great crimp tubes if they're great crimp tubes, period. But if you're using the magical crimping plier, these will give you a nice finished looking little bead. Uh, they're great with the fold over crimp too, but um, 
if you like the magical crimping plier the secret one of the secrets is to have a good quality crimp tube so i'm putting both of my wires through the crimp tube and i'm going to take one and make a loop and go back down through the tube and in my design i know that it will fit through my gold bead um, but if it's possible you know feed it back through a couple of beads just just looks nicer to trim it away from where your clasp is going to be it's less noticeable where you've cut your wire um, and on this side I just need to get it in there I don't need to worry about my spacing or anything just get it in there because um, I'll straighten everything out and uh, make it just you know lay just right when I get to the other side so um, you could help yourself <laughs> by going ahead and attaching your jump ring uh, and to give yourself a little bit of leverage, but I don't know why. Uh, maybe I like to make things hard on myself, but I've been doing my doing it this way. Um, so just if you can see what I did, I fed my wire back down through that bead. I have a decent size loop, and I'm letting this other wire that I did not loop just hang out. And I'm just going to give myself a little space for my plier to fit in there. And I'm just going to turn that crimp tube into a little gold bead. It pinches the four corners, or actually makes four corners. And I'm just going to go around a few times, turn that into a bead. I love this. This is my favorite way to crimp. I do flat crimp sometimes, and I do the taco <laughs> fold over crimp, but this is my favorite way. That looks great. And now I'm going to trim as close as I can, but like I say, this we didn't do spacing yet, so uh, it's all going to get pushed. I moved my trash can to the other side of my table, <laughs> and I'm not used to it yet, and I keep throwing things on the floor. I'm going to have a mess to clean up. <laughs> Sometimes you organize yourself <laughs> out of being organized. <laughs> okay, now we can come to this end, remove the little stopper, and pay close attention to the spacing. Just lay it flat and I'm just gonna make everything. Now normally when we do a bracelet or a necklace, we don't want it rigid. You know, we want things to have a little space to move and to flow around the body, but I was considering purposefully making this one really tight so that it would be like a bangle. So I'll see how it turns out. Um, like I say, the soft flex is peeking through, it's even peeking through these beads a little bit, but it matches and I have it exposed here and I have it exposed on my earring. So I think it's lovely. I really love the way this little bracelet turned out. Just gonna play for just a second before I do my crimping, just to make sure this is me. This is the way that I work. I try to edit this out because I know it drives some people crazy that um, I spend so much time on something like this, but I do, and it makes me happy. And I do deal with dyslexia. And when I go fast, uh, when I try to speed up, I end up connecting things upside down or, you know, it's just something I have to manage. Okay, I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this side. I have my my bracelet looking great. I'm going to do the exact same thing on this side. Crimp tube on. Make a loop. Just repeat. Okay, look at this sweet little bracelet. I love it. I love the way that it turned out. So now I'm just going to add my toggle clasp and I do have a couple of extra jump rings here because I find that sometimes adding a toggle with one or two extra jump rings on each end, especially on the T-bar end, will make it much easier to take it on and off. For me, I find that if a piece of jewelry is too difficult, to take it on and off, even if it's beautiful, if it's laying in my jewelry tray, um, I'll just look at it and I end up never reaching for it. I end up never wearing it because if I have to struggle to get it on and off, it's, you know, I just won't wear it.
So what I'm going to do is put three jump rings on the T-bar side of my toggle and two on the other side and hopefully that will make this really easy to take it on and off. Put pliers in there and make a good circle. Oh, that is perfection. The length is perfect. The way you can take it on and off is perfect. And what a sweet little bracelet. This is great to wear alone or to stack with other things. And so while I have it on, I'm just going to choose a spot. I was debating if I wanted to put my leaf somewhere in here, right near the flowers on the front of the bracelet, or if I want to go to the back. Um, let me make my other charm, my other dangle with the flower bead. I'm going to get a gold head pin. Okay, I'm going to get a gold head pin and I think I'm going to make a little stack using some of the elements in the box. So I'll put my, my ball head pin there and then these little hematite spacers from the DD Beads website are so amazing in design. They have such a cool shape and I've used them in all the pieces. Let's see, I didn't use them in the earrings, but um, I'm gonna grab another one of these little fluted three millimeters. That's just such a sweet little charm. That's perfect. Um, so for these, um, my head pins are very fine. So I am going to do a really small wire wrapped loop just because they're fine. I love these head pins and I work with them all the time. I've reordered them a lot. But um, depending on what I'm doing, I don't always trust a simple loop because they're a very fine gauge. looks great. Just trim really close. <laughs> I am going to have to move my trash can back because I keep throwing things on the floor. <laughs> Silly. Okay, and I just want to make sure that nothing is going to put a snag in my clothes or scratch my skin. And everything looks great and so I have this little jump ring and I think I want another jump ring too I don't think I want to hang both of them on the same jump ring let's do this I do sort of like it next to the flowers So I'm going to go around this whole circumference. These leaves do have a front and a back. One side has the little leaf veins and the other side doesn't. Um, but they're all the same. It's pretty much the same color. So I think it's going to look good here. Oh yeah, that's really pretty. And I like the extra, having the extra little jump ring because it really makes it dangle nicely. And then I'm gonna add this, um, let's see, let me play with this, maybe in front of the leaf. That might be pretty, let's see. Oh, that's so pretty. I love that. And it will spin around both ways. Really, really beautiful little, little charms like right next to the flower. Okay, I'm gonna take another piece of my Softflex uh, purple amethyst wire. And this is so simple. You just need one crimp tube for this. I'm just gonna feed the wire through the leaf front to back. 
and then what did I do next? One of these beads, these spacer beads uh, have a really high, really um, high rating uh, for not tarnishing, and uh, so far I haven't had a problem. Um, but I, I, you know, I read the ratings when I buy something, and I have reordered them twice. So, but they have a nice large hole, and that's all I did is feed the wire up through that, and then I'm going to gather up both of these wires and put it through the flower bead. And these are three petal flower beads, so I want to do this earring the same as the other, and have the the wire going in between the two petals so it matches the other earring, and just pull that down and just make sure everything is centered because I'm going to tighten it with my crimp tube. So now it looks like that. And then it's hard to believe, but this little tiny three millimeter bead does accommodate both of these 49 strand wires. And I'm just going to let that drop down. So there's my earring and another crimp tube. And it's going to be essentially the same thing that we did. I'm going to take one of my wires, let's get a hold of it. Oh, it's stuck, it's got something on it. That's why it wouldn't separate. And I'm just gonna make a loop. And let's see, did I go back? I did go back, it does fit through. Can you see, it's crazy that three of those wires fits through that little, that little crimp to, uh, crimp, that little three millimeter bead. And I'm just gonna pull a loop and pull everything down to the top of my earring. And since they're earrings, I am gonna do my best to match my loop and my spacing to my other earring. Let's see how big my loop is. Oh, much smaller than that. The first earring you don't, you just make it and however it turns out is how it turns out. But you do have to take a little bit of time to make sure that everything on this one matches. So can you see this is a little bit tighter here. So I need to back everything up a little tiny bit. So this swings freely. Let's kind of look at my spacing. That's pretty good. Same thing, magical crimping plier turn that little tube into a bead. One thing I find when I'm doing this is if I pull one of the wires behind my loop and one of the wires to the front and just make sure that before I crimp down that that loop is parallel to my mat. I know it's a small loop, but I find that these stay together really well when I crimp that way. So just like that. And I made a little pillow with four corners or a little ravioli in the other direction and then just go around a few times making a bead. Beautiful. Now just trim as close as I can making sure not to cut my loop. Don't want to have to redo it. And same thing here get in there as close as I can and now as I said there is a front and a back to these leaves this will be the front whoops I can see that I need to trim this a little bit closer I can see the wire there we go much better And that little earring is basically done. I just had these ear wires in my stash and I'm going to open it and just make that face forward. That's the side with the veining on it. So just make sure that that's attached facing forward. And I didn't intend to have a bracelet and earring set, but that's what I got. I mean, I usually do make earrings with whatever beads are left over, um, but in a two hole design, I always think I'm going to use more beads than I do, but look at these. I love the ear. I love both. I love these earrings and I love the bracelet and I love this. Um, like it's like a winter lilac with the gold and you know, with the, 
deluxe check bundle. I happen to love gold, but you could do anything like this and do your favorite metal. You could do silver, you could do bronze, you could do copper would be really pretty. Uh, copper and purple is so beautiful, like coppers and lilacs is so beautiful. So this little set is done. I'll put some pictures up at the end of the video and don't forget to check the description box. Um, that's where I put my discount code to DD Beads and a list of all my tools that I love that I regularly use in my videos and anything else that I've used in a project uh, that I think you might want for your own work is always in my description boxes. So I thank you so much for watching. And um, I did check this morning as of this filming, there was still a quantity of these um, deluxe check bundles on DD Beads website. Um, she is a small business, a boutique bead you know online bead source um, and a woman-owned business and she does do limited editions on things but since i've been doing videos with her beads she has been doing a little bit larger quantities so everybody that wants what they're seeing has a chance to get it so i thank you so much for watching i hope everybody's safe and well and having fun on your beading mats ciao creative friends